We are so fortunate that in the 1950s, George decided to record what he knew about places in California and Oregon from the well-known locations such as Pilot Rock to obscure springs, ranches, and landmarks. Although it is difficult sometimes to locate a place by George's descriptions, he gave a lot of history and names of people who were connected to places when he knew them. The places are all indexed on SOHS's website, and we are adding the full text for each one. This will help researchers connect people who lived in the past with places and events. As we share some of his observations, please note that the photos don't generally match the place names. This is very rough terrain. I don't know if George took photos, but SOHS's collection doesn't include them if he did. Maybe in the future someone a little more intrepid than I am will map some of the place names and photograph them for us. Pilot Rock was first called Pilot Knob and was the feeding ground for mountain sheep and the grizzly bear. It's a big, bluffy rock, and the area on its east side is one of the roughest places in southern Jackson County, Oregon. Pilot Rock can be seen for many miles, and for this reason it was one of the landmarks used by the early explorers. It was named long before northern California and southern Oregon were settled, and served as a guidepost before roads and trails were built through the country. The Pilot Rock country must have been heaven for the wild things of the forest before the white man came with his firearms and his sheep and his cattle. The timber and brush on the steep and rocky hillsides around Pilot Rock made it one of the last places the wildlife used to escape from the man and his rifle. I believe it was in the early 1890s when a man named Roughly camped in the right-hand fork of Camp Creek. There's a gulch or swale that comes into the main fork that's called Roughly's Hollow, and the old campsite there is known as Roughly's Camp. In about 1921, the cattlemen built a log corral there, but the place is still known as Roughly's Camp. Roughly made pickets there that he sold to William A. Wright. There's still some pretty big rattlesnakes in that area. They're the dark kind and are usually on the fight. People who are afraid of rattlesnakes would do well to stay away from that area. Back in the 1920s, I accounted for a few big ones with my old peacemaker. One of my reasons was to reduce the rattlesnake population, and two, I just like the smell of that black powder smoke. Rattlesnakes were not the only wildlife Wright wrote about. He mentioned the salmon and trout in the Klamath River and in creeks such as Bogus, Jenny, Fall, Mud Spring, and Camp Creeks. Deer and bear were often mentioned too, and wild horses near Slide Ridge. Cougars were perhaps not common in George's experience, but he told stories about them near Lone Pine Ridge, Seven Point, Salt Creek Ridge, Dry Spring, and Skookum Ridge. His most chilling tale took place at Shakes Spring in 1888. Mr. and Mrs. Thomas Hearn were camped there in order to make shakes. George said it was a pretty place to camp, and trees that were used for the shakes were just a few hundred yards away. The Hearns left their baby daughter asleep in her cradle for an hour or so while they made shakes. When they returned along the cattle trail, they saw fresh cougar tracks leading toward their camp. Although the tracks led to within a few feet of the cradle, their baby girl was unharmed. A ways back in about 1860, or a little later, when ropes and six guns was the law and the order of the range land, three cattle rustlers had a corral along a little creek, later called Corral Creek, where they blotted the brands on cattle out with the bottom of a hot frying pan. The rustlers were later caught, probably by a group of cattlemen near what is now the Upper Licks along Keene Creek, and were hanged to some trees in a timbered hideaway spot at the edge of Keene Creek. My uncle, William A. Wright, told me that the bones of the rustlers and pieces of their clothes and ropes were still there when he first started to ride the range in 1866. The three rustlers met their doom long ago, and the corral they built is gone too, but the name Corral Creek is well known to this day. Corral Creek empties into Jenny Creek at the Pinehurst Inn and heads northwest in the higher mountains.
Pine Creek heads in the high mountains east of Pilot Rock and west of Lone Pine Ridge and around the spider camp. In the early days, there was a big pine tree on a big long ridge, and for this reason, the ridge was called Lone Pine Ridge. The creek has been called Pine Creek for scores of years, but they've named it Scotch Creek on the maps in late years, and why this has been done, I do not know. In any event, it has always been Pine Creek to me, and I am going to continue to call it Pine Creek. Some of these hurry-up, live-fast, pencil-pushing fellas do sometimes get some funny things down on paper, but that is another story. The lower part of Pine Creek was my playground when I was a boy, and now when I'm down in that part of the country, I think of my boyhood days and picture a shy little barefoot boy with his bow and arrows trying to be like a full-grown Indian before the white man came this way. Many years ago, the wind caused the big lone pine to fall to the ground, and it is slowly turning to dust. I've heard it said that all things will come to an end, and I've heard at funerals that man is made of dust and will return to dust, and probably the same holds true for trees also. Lone pine is gone as a living thing, but its name lives on and on. Maybe this too shall pass, and the name Lone Pine be forgotten. But if it does happen, it will be long after the old tree has turned to dust. When I think of Lone Pine, I'm reminded of a song that I used to hear long ago. On the trail of the lonesome pine. Oh, in the blue, it's mountains of again. 